Alright, hi guys, yeah, as uh, Kate said, introduce me, my name is James and I'm studying engineering at the University of Western Australia at the moment and I'm just going to talk a little bit about my, uh, Kate was actually very kind, I'm not near fluent, but uh, uh, I'll be talking about my journey and learning. So it started roughly 11 years ago and uh, yeah, before you start thinking that uh, someone uh, who's been learning for 11 years should be fluent in five or six languages, right? Well actually, this is not the case at all. Uh, I'm currently learning two foreign languages and yeah, I'm not close to fluent by any means and uh, this doesn't discredit the efforts or incapabilities of my high school French teachers. <laughs> but uh, yeah, sadly there's an element of truth in the statement. I uh, took French in high school for about eight years and technically anyone that uh, uh, learns a language uh, for this amount of time should be close to fluent or at a very high level. And uh, while some of my friends were, were quite, quite good at processing and uh, they were good during high school, um, I would struggle to make it through each lesson. I actually was able to find a photo of me. Yeah. <laughs> that would be me mostly uh, every lesson. So I managed to grab a few phrases. Je veux quitter cette lesson, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> Oh, back then I was an overly keen rower, so, Madame, laisse-moi tranquille, je veux dormir. Uh, miss, please leave me alone, I want to go to sleep. But yeah, this was my first experience learning a foreign language, and uh, to be honest, it was quite off putting. As a true blue, 100% Australian English speaker, I had the mindset that French wasn't my thing, or I would tell myself things like, oh, when, when will I ever need to use French in my lifetime? And it was a shame that this was my initial experience, and it was quite bad for me looking back on it. But it taught me one of the best things, uh, which, I, which I still carry with me today, and that you need to have a good mindset when you're learning languages. Back then I believed I couldn't do it, which led me to not even trying to do it, to be honest. And I can confidently, confidently say that if you believe in yourself and have the confidence, the journey becomes a lot easier. <coughs> Fast forward a few years, and I was introduced to language learning for the second time. Uh, with this time with a major difference though. Instead of being forced into learning French three times a week for eight years, I actually chose to do an introduction course to German at the University of Western Australia. And this time around it went quite differently. It's not to say that it was no struggle at the start. Many of my friends doubted me. Not only was I a single-minded native Australian English speaker, something perhaps even more outrageous, I was not an art student. <laughs> While I'll admit I was, it was intimidating sitting down next to Sally on the first day, who studied French, Italian, Ancient Greek, and then did German on the side, and I was studying mathematical methods, fluid mechanics, solid mechanics, and then German as an elective, I enjoyed the experience of anything to go to a different part of the university, meet new people from different faculties, areas, and walks of life. To be honest, after two years, for the first time in engineering, it was good to have a girl in the classroom. <laughs> Now the odds were looking pretty grim for me to keep up with these people who had no problem remembering the case, gender, tense and declination of a word for the first time it was ever said to them. One thing however that helped me keep up with these multilingual art students is a piece of advice which may or may not have come from engineering. But when learning a language you cannot cr cram it all in before the test. You cannot learn it in one day. You need to dedicate a little bit of time every day, whether that be five minutes on the bus to work or 30 minutes before you go to bed at night. If you're looking to learn a foreign language and are here tonight, in my opinion, this is the most important tip I'd like you to take home with you. Say you're starting at 15 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day for a revision of what you already know, and five minutes to learn new vocabulary. That's approximately 100 hours by the end of the year. And if you are learning five new words every day, that's nearly 1,900 words that you should know after one year of learning. In the English language, 1,000 words are used in 89% of everyday writing, and 3,000 words will be used in 95% of everyday writing, so you're getting pretty close. This is what I did. I had a little routine formed, and uh, I saw myself going from mediocre marks to getting high distinctions in some of the tests. Over the next two years, this worked out to be great, but it was all theory, and there was no practical uh, essence of it. So I decided to change this, and when I got accepted to go on exchange in 2014. After a newfound love of learning German, where was I going? Berlin? Hamburg? Munich? No, even better. 
I got accepted to go do an exchange in the city of Ottawa, a French-speaking Canadian. <laughs> um, good thing I paid attention in all those years ago in class, right? Just my luck. While well, I've been studying German for the past two years, I get sent to a city which speaks a language responsible for so many after-school detentions and bad grades in high school. And to be honest, I was quite angry and hesitant to go. This dramatically changed after arriving. Once I could figure out that sortie means exit in French and I was able to leave the airport. <laughs> Although my German didn't improve that much, it was my first experience being in a place that actually functions and thrives in a different language. And this was the pinnacle for me. This is what changed my life, I think, forever. I was fascinated that English speakers and French speakers could live together and be friends. I was fascinated with the French people and it came so naturally to them. Because they thought I was a bit strange for, for this, but because of me, it changed from listening to Mark buy three apples and a pear at the grocery store on a CD to real life people you could talk with, laugh with, and more importantly, have a beer with. Before even knowing the language, just being interested in the French language over there literally doubled my opportunities to make friends. The old James would have shunned the French speakers or the Quebecers and only talked and hung out with the English. However, I noticed myself more than once sitting at a table with all French speakers, so content just to listen to something different and look at these aliens communicate. <laughs> the thing with language learning is not, it's not just a gateway to speak with other people, but it's a gateway to the culture. I soon found myself very friendly with a girl from Montreal. She took me to places and showed me things that I would have never been able to experience in the most hidden parts of Quebec, which are normally hidden from the English speakers. This is all because I was inquiring into the language. Because of the experience and this new friend, I decided to do the impossible and actually start learning French again. To my discontent, eventually I had to leave Canada and come back to the real world, but uh, the, the French of me lived on and now instead of studying a language to get a good grade, it was so much more. I was studying to be able to communicate with friends and in the hope that next time I return I would be able to speak to them in their own language and this is all the more motivating. So now, undertaking two languages, I thought I'd try and experience this realness and practice my German side. Not wanting to play Russian roulette again with the exchange, I booked a direct flight to Berlin. <laughs> um, this sealed the deal for learning languages to me, really. Um, after the, all the years of learning and hard work, I can't explain to you the feeling of finding someone and communicating with them in a different language. After all the reading, listening and speaking with your teacher, it is truly an incredible feeling um, to speak to someone in their own language, even if it is after six or seven beers at the kebab store. <laughs> but that brings me to where I am now, and um, where most people I find fail to keep up with the language after a month or so, I honestly implore you to keep going, and uh, to turn the hypothetical grammar situations into a real life situation where you visit a country and use this newfound language. The benefits of, uh, it has provided for me are immense. On a social side, I made friendships that will last a life, lifetime. I came back from both of these trips and I ended um, being friends with Canadian, French people and German people in Perth that I didn't even know existed, simply for the love of the same language. There is a quote from Nelson Mandela, which I think sums up the social aspect of speaking a foreign language greatly. If you talk to a man in a language he understands, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in, a in his own language, that goes to his heart. And I truly believe this is the case. And you find that anyone who meets you or sees you learning their language, even showing any interest in it, will have respect for you and will be willing to help you and get you over the initial embarrassing stages of learning. As an engineer who is also starting to look for work in a couple of years, I have to tell you about the opportunities for a good career. When I graduated from my undergraduate class last semester of 400 students, 15 graduated with a double degree in engineering plus a second language, and I think this number speaks for itself. When there is such a tough market for jobs at the moment, anything to differentiate you and anything to separate you from the guy before you in line at the job interview is so greatly appreciated. Within the engineering discipline in itself, Germany has multiple companies that work or have partnerships here in Australia. Uh, and to be able to write down on your resume that you can communicate with these geniuses in their own language will speak volumes. To be honest, in such a multicultural world that we live in today, I'm, uh, I'm fearful to say, but I think it will come to a point that if you do not speak a second language, then you will be behind the competition. 
probably the most valuable experience I have in an example of this is a direct result study. German was uh, a couple of weekends ago when I was invited to celebrate the day of German reunification at the government house, which to my parents' envy, they'd never been there before. Although this was not me personally, but as an invite of a German student at UWA, I had the opportunity to chat and have, some, uh, have a chat with some of the biggest engineering companies and influ influential Germans in Western Australia. In a short summary of how I got over the initial hump of learning and being able to speak, small amounts of practice every day, I can't, uh, I can't enforce this enough. Also having a goal in sight and using your language in your country of choice. What's the point of learning a language if not to communicate with other human beings? Sure, you might be able to read a recipe, a map, but I can guarantee you the greatest satisfaction will come from talking with other people. The earlier you can go to the country to do this, or even to go to one of the many uh, multiple language clubs that Perth has to offer, this will motivate you more than you thought possible. So whether you're looking to pick up on your family's traditional language, wanting to move somewhere and fit in, looking to impress a girl at the bar, or wanting to impress that company that just made a huge deal with a foreign correspondent, I implore you to pick up a foreign language. The world of opportunity, friendship and career possibility will be open to you in ways you could never have imagined and it will change your life as it has changed mine. Thank you for listening.